Thank you for coming and um, uh, by being here you have made the right choice because uh, both uh, Jeff and myself are people that work on a daily basis uh, in the industry and have insight into how things actually uh, you know, work in the real world of uh, filmmaking. And uh, I also wanted to note that I welcome interaction, so feel free to interrupt me if you have questions about anything. Uh, we don't really have to follow um, the outline of what I have planned. I you know, would like to know more about you, about what you would like to hear. Having said that, there are a few things that I do want to start with. <laughs> Um, I wanted to uh, set out some goals for uh, this next uh, seminar. Um, one is that uh, I want you to be familiar with the terms that are used. And Chef did talk a lot about them, about like what's Princeton advertisement, what is an MG. And I'm going to go into more depth into how the rights are defined because that's going to inform uh, a lot about the uh, revenue waterfall, about you know where uh, things come from in terms of monetizing a film. Uh, I also wanna want you to uh, be familiar with the timeline of distribution and exhibition, exploitation of the film. It is something that has a little bit of overlap uh, uh, with what Jeff uh, put together, but it kind of follows from that forward in time uh, into what happens after a film is financed, after it's produced, basically once it's distributed. Um, so the idea is that if you are an indie filmmaker, uh, what you should take out of this seminar is things that you would have to be thinking about throughout the entire process of making a film. If you are more familiar into how things are distributed, then it will inform much of your decisions along the line. And if you are interested in working in the field, I'll have you know that very few people actually work in the field in terms of like sales agents. There's only a handful of them, and they um, are known, they have a reputation. If you are familiar with the terminology, if you're familiar with the things, uh, what things are called in the industry, you have an advantage uh, that will probably, uh, you know, help you if you are seeking to find work in the distribution business. Um, so I know that there's different expectations, there's different experiences here, so I'm gonna try to uh, put it all in like basic, most basic terms that I can. Um, so I have a few recommendations of things that you should do uh, right away. The number one thing is go to deadline.com and sign up for their free news service and stay informed about things that happen in the industry all the time. It, it's, I do it, uh, people in the industry do it. Uh, it's very important that you know what the big players are doing how the uh, changes in technology are affecting the way that films are made, distributed, watch. There's a lot of uh, very interesting things that happen daily and so uh, keeping informed is going to be helpful to your career, no question about it. Um, I also have a recommendation uh, for more information and a different perspective into what I'm going to be talking about, which is a book that's called Think Outside the Box Office. It's written by a gentleman by the name of John Rees. John Rees is an, it's a documentary uh, and, you know, a broad term uh, filmmaker. And uh, it records his experience finding distribution by himself for the film and uh, dealing with a never-changing market. It, uh, it offers a different perspective on what I'm going to talk about, but it's very detailed, so if you are really interested in the subject, um, read the book. Uh, another thing that I feel is important for you, and I keep repeating this all the time, is that you set out your goals and decide what is it that you want to do as a filmmaker and for your film. And one is, do you want to make a name for yourself? The other thing is, 
do you want to have an impact on the world or do you want to make money or a combination of those it's important that you know because that's also going to inform the way that you approach making a film uh, and I have a one last recommendation and that's a, a biopic documentary that's available in HBO if you have their service it's called Seduced and Abandoned and it basically records uh, Alec Baldwin's and James Tovac's trip to the Cannes Film Festival and their meetings with industry insiders as they're trying to finance a film that finally could not get financed <laughs> but you know a documentary came out of it and it's very interesting because you're gonna see people that I meet with like during the markets tell this guy why you know his expectations are off and this is Alec Baldwin you know uh, so it's it, it's uh, it's an interesting look into how the other side the people that need to invest in your film how they approach it the things that they look at and it's funny and hilarious so uh, at the very least you're gonna have a fun time okay that went pretty fast um, so uh, another thing I wanted to talk about real quick is uh, about who I am about myself and uh, Leda Films the company that owns independent international television which is uh, the US arm of Leda Films it has been around for 40 years it's been uh, founded by my father who's been in the industry for 50 years and so when um, you know amongst all the stories that I hear daily is how the technology and the developments in technology change dramatically the way things are done and to give you an example when he started in the industry there was only one window and that was theaters in Argentina there were theaters there was no TV there was there were just theaters so um, his job was to go out and find advertisement to put in you know like stills before the movie that people would you know see and so he would go to like local stores and ask them if they wanted to have some space in the movie theater uh, you know he would negotiate a fee he would go there take a picture of the store <laughs> put on some captions and you know that's how he started getting into the movie business um, and then there was a technology development that changed everything all of a sudden there was television and you could broadcast things into a box into people's home and so um, it was live there was no way of recording the television so he basically scripted advertisements that actors would play in front of the camera and they would be put you know before or after a show uh, and then another technology revolution came which was taping <laughs> all of a sudden you could record things and you could put them on TV at you know scheduled times you could repeat them you could make a whole you know it changed everything so off he went and um, bought some product I think that his first series was Tarzan and so he bought the tapes for Tarzan made some copies and he would go in you know this propelled air airplanes that were the commercial airliners of the time and he would go to the different countries that are in Latin America and basically would come up and say okay so here's a, here's the film he would put it together in a projector show it to the TV executives and they would decide if they you know yeah I want it uh, they would negotiate a license fee and there you go punk <laughs> there you have it that's it uh, compare that to now where we are delivering to uh, 20 something countries in Latin America via internet by a wire where I don't I, there's no physical tape so the, the the technology really has changed what we do uh, all the time and we're always changing what we do as well to follow the trends and stay you know in the business so this year we will turn 40 years old uh, we have uh, some experience with uh, major studios aside from like uh, acquiring and distributing independent films 
Uh, throughout our history, we were also the sales reps for television uh, for Fox in the Southern Corn. Uh, then that lasted like a decade and a half, and um, then they took it on themselves. Sometimes studios do that, sometimes they use independent distributors to uh, put their products out there, sometimes they do them themselves. So this was the case with Fox, but then we were approached by a gentleman uh, whose uh, partner was uh, Steven Spielberg, and so that was the name, and they were interested in us distributing their films uh, to television, and that was DreamWorks. And um, DreamWorks was bought on by Viacom, and Viacom owns Paramount, and so that's how we also got to uh, be the sales agents for Paramount to television stations in Latin America. Uh, DreamWorks went off on itself, so now we are uh, the sales agents for Paramount and we have our own independent product. Uh, Alright, the last thing that um, I wanted to touch on was that I was, uh, well, well uh, Jeff talked about the Independent Film and Television Alliance, which is a trade organization that represents uh, to the largely, to a great extent, uh, sales agents, but also producers uh, and others. Uh, they invited me to be an expert in their legal committee and give opinions in 2010 on what should establish the common standard uh, distribution terms and definitions that were to be used in the template of their international distribution agreements. So. Uh, the big discussions, of course, were the definitions of digital rights and how uh, those were going to be, you know, uh, defined uh, or exploited. And there was, a, there, we did not come to an agreement. Nobody did. Uh, we came to a compromise. And unfortunately, with the changing times, within a few years, it was already not what the industry ended up taking as standard practice. But we'll touch uh, more on that later. Um, a few things that I wanted to, you know, also have you bear in mind is that uh, your film is unique. And so it also lives in a very unique uh, spectrum of the distribution ecosystem. So, in other words, you have to bear in mind uh, who's your audience. That's basically the, the most important factor, is that you know uh, who you, are you making the film for, who's going to be engaged, and who's going to be the um, ultimate buyer, the people that would, you know, buy the film to watch it. Uh, also, uh, each country and each territory is unique and so they have different tastes in film. They like different things. Um, having said that, action films, thrillers, comedies, films with known cast uh, generally attract a lot more commercial value than otherwise. So the important thing here is that you try to work with as known uh, crew as as you can because uh, that's gonna drive uh, that's gonna be a lot more helpful if you're working with somebody that you know had a trajectory that had experience in the field um, another important subject matter is to think about the hook what's what's the hook of your film what is gonna uh, be engaging what's gonna engage the audience what will motivate them to watch it and buy it. And, from, and the other thing that I would want you to uh, have very present in your mind is to do marketing and start on the marketing as early as possible. There's no too early in terms of like marketing your film, you know, making a website or putting it, you know, Facebook. There's people that document the production process that uh, put uh, you know pictures of production out there in Facebook while the film is shooting. Uh, there's um, 
there's a lot of ways that you can engage your audience. If you know who your audience is, it's going to help you find the venues into which those people usually go uh, to talk about films, to discuss films. So another important thing about that is that it's not only that you put it out there, it's that you also interact with the people that go to the sites. If you, know, you put a picture, somebody says something, acknowledge that, uh, you know, respond to it, and keep them engaged. Because basically what you're trying to do uh, at an ultimate level is to have people be engaged with the film from the very start. And also you're seeking to have certain numbers. If, you have, uh, if you're looking for a buyer and you have a Facebook page that has like thousands of hits, thousands of views, a lot of people have seen the pictures, a lot of people have seen the trailer, that's going to help you a lot. Because it's already going to, you know, uh, give a hint that uh, people are interested in the film. Uh, so that's, that's important. Uh, and the other thing, I know this sounds completely obvious, but sometimes I have a feeling that it's not too obvious to some people, which is that try to make the film as good as it can possibly be. Don't skimp out on things because you had other priorities in your life, that's never gonna work. If you are really trying to make something good and put it out there, try to make it as good as it possibly can be because it's your only shot. So invest your entire self on it and don't compromise. Uh, that's gonna make a huge difference. And also, from a buyer standpoint, a good film starts with a good script. So if you feel that this, well, you, you mentioned this also, if you feel that the script is not strong enough, start there and start working on it and make it final. Don't come to somebody that you want to be invested in the project uh, with the first draft. It's important that uh, you, know, you have a script that is as good as it can possibly be. And if uh, you have, if you already shot your film, then test screenings are probably a good idea. And we talked about that. Having people uh, watch it, if you still have time and budget for a little bit more of post-production, that's something that even major studios do. The film that we now know as World War C uh, was a different film. <laughs> and they had test screenings and they decided to redo half of the movie so you know it's very important that you that you know if you if you finish with your film you have it in front of you I know it's challenging I know that you don't want to go back to the editing room but listen to what the people that have watched it said especially if they represent a part of your target audience because if you feel that you will have a better chance by changing a few things you will have to do it remember it is your only shot so that's something that I wanted uh, you to know as well delivery materials please I, I say this from experience because I have to deal with delivery material issues all the time Part of, it's not only about making a good story nowadays, it's not only making a, a good film, it's having the materials ready and in good, proper technical standards to be able to affect delivery. Because as Jeff you know, explained, the MG is triggered by making delivery of the film. So if you don't have proper delivery materials, you will not be able to live up to the international distribution contracts and it's going to be a huge problem. So you need to have somebody advise you on technical standards from the very beginning and put a good trailer together. By the way, great work on that. Okay. <laughs> um, a good trailer is you don't you rarely going to have the time to have a buyer look at the entire film and a trailer gives them a lot of information 
about the mood of the film, about what the film is about, about what the target audience will be. So it's really important that you put together a good trailer and if it means that you have to spend the money for it, you have to you have to do it, you know, so don't skip out. Um, promos, teasers and mood reels are very important, especially before you have a trailer because you're maybe still shooting the film but uh, you want to ha uh, have people engage with it very early on. So by putting together, uh, uh, let's say, a director's statement, by putting together just like some key shots, uh, teasers, short things, a, a, you know, having a visual will sell a lot more than just having a pitch. So that's also very important. Uh, and something that al also, you know, sounds obvious, but I mean, from my experience, it hasn't been the case. Choose a good title. You know, the, it's the first thing that people will see from your film. Uh, if you have an engaging title, you have a better chance at keeping them engaged. Um, stills throughout the shoot of your film have somebody with a high definition camera taking pictures of everything of the cast of the shoot of the crew because from those pictures is where you're gonna put the poster together uh, those pictures are used in all kinds of advertisement and marketing materials uh, it's very important that you have proper stills and that you take pictures of everything. It's also going to be part of your press kit, which uh, is going to be very important as well and something that investors will look at. A press kit includes a logline, a short synopsis, a long synopsis, crew bios, cast bios, the stills. You could put together the director statement, you could put together an interview. Uh, and the technical specifications, what was it shot in. Uh, and the good thing is that you're going to be spending all this time and effort doing things that seem to be outside of the, the goal of just making the film. But in reality, all of these things that you will be doing for the press kit, you can use uh, as extras for the DVD packaging, for example. Or nowadays, in you know digital releases, you could also have like um, director statements. I mean, there's a lot of added value if you have more than just your film. So it's a lot more work, but that's why I started saying that you really have to invest yourself fully to this because, you know, it's a lot more than you think. It's not just making a film. Um, and sometimes, depending on the product, you have the opportunity to uh, capitalize and use the merchandise as a way of A, making money, and B, promoting the film. And the example that I have is a film that we will be releasing in Latin America this year that's called Minuscule. Uh, it's a French animation, and you know, it's very cute, it's for kids. So here's what we did we have um, keychains and we have all these uh, plush toys of the, you know, of the characters of the film and then on our Facebook page uh, we have raffles so give us likes and you can win an ant or a ladybug you know uh, those type of things work really well of course this is the perfect film for this type of promotion because it has you know characters that you could put into a plush toy but you know, you can think of things that you know. If you if you can find that your film or your project has some potential merchandise, it's something that you might you know want to do. It might be helpful. I hope. Uh, I wanted to talk about sales agents, even though uh, Jeff did talk about the role of the sales agent at large. Uh, you know they're very important and uh, it's easier for them to find distribution than it is for just yourself so 
uh, it's based on interpersonal relationships. It's very difficult to get the time of an international distribution to look at your, at your film. The sales agents have access to distributors' time. They have a reputation that's built on past experiences. So uh, their role in the film industry is very important. And the way that it works is like, you know, also Chef mentioned the different markets. Uh, there's uh, NATPI, which is the North American Television Producers and Executives Convention. I know, that's a mouthful. And that's uh, in Miami. That was last week. Uh, there's the Berlin International Film Festival. That's next week. Then there's uh, MIPCOM, MIPTV, Cannes, the Toronto International Film Festival, the American Film Market. There's definitely a lot of opportunities. And these sales agents go, if not to all, to most of these markets. And they travel there. They have a booth where they will have the posters and they will feature your film. And so they have uh, meetings with people like myself. And you know we generally would sit down for half an hour. And they would tell us about the films. They would tell us about why we should buy the film. They have a lot more experience in pitching a film. They know a lot more about how to sell a film. So do hear and listen their advice. It's going to be very important. And you also can keep them engaged from early on uh, while there's still time to change things in terms of production. Um, because, you know, I feel that's important. They also provide uh, servicing. Uh, generally, when I buy a film from a sales agent, uh, when the time comes that I need to get materials uh, for the film, by materials I mean, uh, do you understand what I mean by materials? Let's have a quick yes, no, somebody doesn't know. Explain. Yes, okay. So the materials are the file for the film. It can be in different formats. It used to be tape materials. There are broadcast quality tapes. It, it could also have been in the past 35 millimeter prints, but it's basically the actual film that you give the distributor in high definition for him to duplicate and send to the different broadcasters. In terms of like uh, cinematic distribution, uh, the material is called a DCP, which is a digital cinema package. It's basically a film file. It's different from the type of film file that you would buy on iTunes, for example. Uh, it has en it's encoded in a certain way that you need a key in able to uh, play it, and it plays on projectors that are what actually fits the image in the movie. So. Uh, it, I go to the sales agent when I need to get this material. Uh, that's my contact point. So they also provide those services. They generally charge a percentage of whatever the film will make. Uh, plus, they would also charge for the expense of taking your film to the market, of making the promotional materials and the marketing materials. So, um, okay. Chef already spoke about collection account management, so I'm not going to touch on that. But my only advice to keep things uh, reasonable for you, because if you have your sales agent spend a lot of money on the film, making the marketing materials, and then the sales don't come through, you're not going to see a penny. So it's important that you put a cap on the expenses, that you seek approval on the money that will be spent marketing your film. Uh, and that, I guess, is all I have uh, to give you as advice in terms of sales agents. Okay, I wanted also to talk a little bit about um, things that you could do by yourself in terms of digital distribution because it may happen that your goal is not so much to make money with this particular film. You are jump starting your career you are at the very beginning of it so what you want to do really is make a name for yourself first because that's going to add value into your next film and um, and so 
uh, of course your first option would be to go to a sales agent and have your film distributed but if that doesn't work out and sometimes it happens uh, you are not out of options you could put the film in digital platforms by yourself and it's accessible to you it's something that you could definitely do so I wanted to talk about free services that are available nowadays that may be helpful to you this trigger which is uh, as uh, it, it works as a replacement to the digital distribution aggregator um, in this trigger you could uh, pay a fee and they would deliver your film to a number of digital platforms maybe iTunes uh, Google Play Amazon Prime and um, they would take care of the reporting uh, and so there's different models that they work with you would want to contact them but it's generally something that's accessible to independent filmmakers there's uh, Eureka spelled Y-O-U-R-E-E-E-K-A -E -E um, which basically allows you to create a link where you could offer your film on your own website and you know people can uh, pay for a transaction of watching your film uh, they would pop it would pop up it's your web page but basically they are the ones that are providing the servers and they're providing the technical capabilities in order for that to be able to happen and then there's uh, Stonehenge Productions which are uh, pioneering a new way of putting films out there which is basically creating an iTunes app for your film which you can put on the App Store and sell the film as an app. The advantage of doing that is that you could also put there all the extras that you have shot because now you know that you have to put all this effort into the press kit might as well put it into the app as well. Um, that was a very short part one